So the very first thing that came to my mind whenever I heard about this was when I was pregnant and I just, um, I usually like to plan for things. I like to be in control of things or at least think that I'm in control, have that illusion of control. And I just remembered every single day how there was this whole human growing um, and developing and being formed and I had absolutely nothing to do with it. I couldn't consciously grow his little toes or develop his heart, but it was all just happening. Um, and it just made me realize how God is in control always and how that's happening within each of us all the time. Um, even if it's not a human body inside of us that we're growing and we're developing and God is doing all of these things within us all the time without any of our control. Um, and it, and, and, and it shows up in the world and how we show up in the world. And so I got a beautiful son from that who shows up in the world in the most amazing ways and teaches me all the time. Um, and it helps me to want to show up in the world um, in the way that God is developing me inside. So um, he's definitely had that ripple effect on me. <laughs> I love Callie. <laughs> what an amazing, what an amazing message to start our worship together this morning. Good morning. Uh, my name is Taylor. I'm the director of Worship Arts. It is such a joy to be with you at 10.02 in the morning, all together in one place, whether you are worshiping here in person or if you're joining us online, I want to welcome you. I want you to know that we want you here. And uh, we say these words frequently every Sunday, and it's because they are an essential part of who we are and what we believe. We believe that God's love is for you exactly as you are. You are a beautifully crafted child of God, created in God's image, just like the image that Callie painted in that video as we start our worship together, focusing on that, that growth the changes that we are all making as we move together in this world, it is a beautiful reminder of what it means to be in community, to grow together. You're going to notice today's worship is a little bit different than usual. It's another way that expresses how we move together. So I invite you, if some of today's worship is not a way that you typically express worship, to just open yourself to a new experience. Maybe it's a new style of music. Maybe it's a new style of prayer. Just to be present here with one another to show up fully as yourself because you are loved, you are beloved in this space and when you leave these walls. So we celebrate that this morning. We celebrate you and we are going to worship together now with our opening hymn. It's in the United Methodist Hymnal. The words will also be on the screen for you. This is a day of new beginnings, verses one through four. So I invite you to rise in body or in spirit and let's begin our worship together in song. My name is Thomas, and it's so good to be with all of you. It is a joy to worship on this day of new beginnings, and we are so grateful for Kathy being here this morning to sign for us. And I want to wish all of you a blessed Veterans Day. 
and we thank our veterans who have served our nation. And now let us begin by joining together in our opening liturgy. We gather to worship God, the designer and creator of all things. God is working in our lives to bring about good things and to remind us that our lives matter. Amen. Now let us greet our online worshipers. I invite you to turn to the camera. In the back, good morning to all of you who are worshiping online. We are so glad you are with us, and now let's greet one another.
be seated. Hi, I wanted to praise God today. I received a diagnosis of one of the nodules of my thyroid when it was removed to 80-90% chance of cancer. I recently had the rest of my thyroid removed. It turns out I do not have any cancer at all. So I wanted to praise and thank God that I did not have any cancer and many people prayed for me and I think the prayer sustained Vince and I. So I wanted to thank God. Yeah, amen, right? Uh, prayer is powerful. And so I invite you now to join me in a time of prayer. God, thank you. Thank you for the love that you have poured into our hearts, into this room. Thank you for the way that you've brought us together, and together in a special way this morning. Uh, those of us who usually worship at, at different hours, all in one space. Uh, those who join us online, joining us in one online space. And God, thank you for, for making us a people who, who welcome others in, who invite others in, who, who really dedicate ourselves to the, the idea that we want, we want everyone to feel like they have a place to belong here. And God, we pray that wouldn't just be something on the surface, but it'd be something that you put deep in our hearts. This this kind of togetherness and, and not the kind that makes us just kind of stay in our place. Not the kind of togetherness that makes us feel like, like protecting it, but the kind of togetherness that, that helps us to go out, to create those ripple effects that, that have an impact on our world, on our families, on our community, on our state and our nation, on the whole globe. God, help us to be the kinds of people who don't hold this kind of experience to ourselves, but the kind of people who are generous. And generous with, with our time, with our energy, with our love, with our money. Generous in ways that, that transform the world, just like you've transformed us, Jesus. So Holy Spirit, come and be in this place. Help us to have those generous hearts, those hearts that give. And we thank, thank you for those who have, who have given as members of our military service, who have, who have served in that way as we celebrate this weekend. Because we know that our world is not always at peace. And right now, in fact, there are wars raging. So God, we pray that you would bring peace, bring an end to the violence that we see in Gaza and Israel. It seems so impossible, God, that there would be peace anytime soon, but we know that you can do it. We pray for peace. We pray for an end to the violence. We pray for safety for women and children and innocence. We pray for the same thing in, in Ukraine as that war continues to drag on. God, there are battles in our hearts too, things that are going on in our workplaces and at school and in our homes. So we lift those up this morning. We lift up everything that is heavy and everything that brings us joy in these moments of silence. God, you are good. And God, you are here. Even when, even when it's hard for us to feel your presence, we trust that you are there, bringing us together, making us one. And so we lift our voices together as one, saying that prayer that you taught us. 
our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Well, good morning, everyone. My name is Mike Orr. I am the director of student ministries and tapestry here at Broomfield UMC, and I've got a few announcements for you. Uh, The first one is we've got a blood drive coming up on Tuesday, the 21st. Uh, All the information is right there if you want to know more. Also, starting point is coming up next week. So next Sunday, if you want to know more about the church or if you just want to have lunch with the staff, uh, come on by. You can RSVP. Let us know uh, if you're coming. Finally, we have Advent small groups coming up, and uh, these, these special small groups are specifically designed to kind of get us ready for Christmas. So they're tackling themes that have to do with that, that preparation time during Advent. If you'd like to know more, you can go to the summit afterwards. There's information there, or you can talk to Pastor Thomas. Uh, we would love to have you join a small group this Advent. Next week, we will have community time just like normal. Uh, This week, we don't have it like normal. We have brunch instead, which is going to be awesome. But next week, we'll have a different kind of meal. We'll have prayer and communion together in the chapel during community time. Now, I get to do something very special. We've been doing something called our Quiet Disciple Recognitions this year. And this uh, this month, we get to recognize our student ministries adult leaders. So I'd invite, like to invite anybody who is here who helps out with our student ministries. Uh, I know we've got Ryan and Jackie, we've got Kirsten. Yeah, come on up as I'm talking about these awesome people. Yeah, this is great. Yeah, so you'll see their, their pictures uh, popping up on the screen. This is a team of adults who invests in the lives of our middle school and high school students. They come on Sundays, they're here on some Wednesdays, they're here all sorts of different times, uh, and they get to help Jackie and I, who are on staff, do what we could not do on our own. In fact, uh, I don't know if you know this, but not everyone likes everyone. Did you know that? (laughs) In fact, it's hard for me to swallow, but not every kid is going to like immediately like me either, and maybe never even. And so it's awesome that we have other youth workers who these kids can connect with, who will help them to know what it means to follow Jesus, to see what it looks like to follow Jesus as an adult. And so you don't you get to see me up here a lot, and so I get a lot of credit for what happens on Sundays and Wednesdays and all those big long trips that we do, but really who makes it happen are these people here. And we have some others that you'll see on the screen who couldn't make it this morning, and they are part of our team too. So thank you, thank you, thank you for what you do. And we have, uh, we have a gift for you. Um, Eli, I think this is your second mug because uh, Eli's on more than one team. And actually, a lot of, uh, a lot of these people are on more than one team. Uh, they serve, they give, and the way they give has a ripple effect that's gonna last for, for decades, actually. I don't know if you guys realize that, but the kids who you serve are gonna remember you their whole lives. So thank you for, uh, for your service and for the things you do. Um, and you guys can find your seats as uh, we come to this time of giving. Yeah. And, you know, I'll make another mention. Um, Most of you know that uh, 12, 12 and a half weeks ago, I broke my neck in an accident, which made it really hard to go to youth group. And I didn't worry for a second, not even a moment, because of these people. So, uh, again, thank you. And thank you because they get to do the work that they do because of the work that you do in the way that you give. Now, the offering we're about to take is our normal offering, the thing we're going to do later is the time when we bring forward our pledges, our, our commitments for the coming year. This is, this is just the work. This is just the, the, the giving that, gives, uh, that goes to continue to support the ongoing work and ministry of Room Fuel UMC. So as our ushers come forward to give, uh, to pass the plates, remember, 
that your gift has an impact far beyond this moment and beyond these walls.
so blessed as a church with our worship arts team, our contemporary worship arts, our traditional worship arts. You guys just bless us every single Sunday. So thank you so much for who you are and for the gifts and talents that you share with us every single week. Good morning to all of you. For those of you, especially who are guests with us today, a special welcome to you. Just introduce myself. My name is Pastor Don, and I am part of the pastoral team here at Broomfield UMC. Uh, This is a special Sunday. Mike already alluded to it a little bit. So this is a little bit different than what we are used to doing together. But we like to do this every now and then. One, just to get everybody together to remind us of who we are with and for one another. But also today is Blessing Sunday. And so a little bit later on in the service, we're going to be doing something that we only do once a year, but it's a way in which we commit ourselves to the ongoing work of Broomfield UMC. And before also I get started, I want to just start off by also congratulating the Broomfield High School boys soccer team who became the 5'8 state champions yesterday. Yes. But also for the students in the room who go to Denver East, who were in, the, in that championship game, congratulations on an incredible season as well, buddy. Yeah. So this week, I read a story in The Guardian about Britain's loneliest sheep, and they named her Fiona. And Fiona lived in the Scottish Highlands where she became where she became separated from her flock somehow. They really don't know how. And she became separated at the foot of the Highlands notorious cliffs. And a kayaker recalls spotting Fiona for the first time along a shingle beach along the rocky coastline while paddling in the water with her with her kayak group. And she said, she, Fiona, saw us coming and was calling to us along the length of the beach, following our progress until she could go no further. She finally turned back, looking defeated. That was two years ago. The group thought that the sheep would eventually, like I think many of us would, make her way back to her flock, and they really didn't think about her again until a year later, that kayaking group came going around in the same spot, and they spotted her again. And again, poor Fiona jumped from rock to rock, calling out to the kayaking group, her fleece so huge and so heavy that it was actually touching the ground. Can you imagine the agony this poor sheep was in, all alone for two years on this rocky coastline, isolated, separated from her flock, her family, her community, desperate to make contact with any living thing. As a flock animal, she was created for community, and while her heart was certainly broken, her spirit wasn't. Her determination, her perseverance over those two years, even in the midst of separation, was what touched the hearts of this kayaking group. And so one of the kayakers made an attempt to have the sheep rescued, but to no avail. Because the local organizations that she contacted were aware of Fiona's situation, but they said that they could not do anything to help. One, because it was too dangerous of a rescue, liability issues. And then the other one was because they did not have permission to step in without the consent and the invitation of other local authorities. So to wrap it all up, they didn't get involved because of bureaucratic red tape, right? Well, eventually, the story got out there, and a group of five local farmers used some heavy equipment, and they were able to carefully and successfully haul Fiona up some very incredibly steep slopes and into safety. Fiona was then transferred to a local farm park where she is now in surprisingly, and she was even then, very good condition, and she's now enjoying part of being a part of her sheep family and flock again. And the story, yeah, we're a clapping group today. We're a clapping group. I like it. The story reminds me that we're all created for community, each and every one of us. We're created for relationship with each other. And it reminds me that we cannot live into our best selves isolated from community. I mean, that's why Jesus talked about going after the one lost sheep, right? Because it was created just like we are for this. For community. 
About five years ago, there was a study that was done at the University of Kansas that discovered how much time we actually need to invest in our relationships to move them from being just an acquaintance to actually having deep friendships. And they found that it takes, on average, about 50 hours of being together, hanging out, joking around, eating together, having conversations, playing games. Work can be a part of it, but it's really not the essence of it. It's the leisure activity that's essential. So it takes about 50 hours to move from that acquaintance status to a casual friendship. And then it takes an average of 90 hours to move from that casual friendship to a friend status. And then an average of about 200 hours to consider someone a very close friend. That's a lot of time. That's a lot of investment in each other especially when there are a lot of other things that distract us in life, with our busy schedules, with our to-do lists, all of the things that we want to accomplish in the day or in our lives. And that study reminds us that relationships that are built on mutual love, respect, and trust, they're not something that just because we want them, we throw them in a microwave and boof, you know, we have an instant friendship. When we believe that God created us for God's self and that God created us for each other, we understand that the most sacred work that we can do as followers of Jesus is to invest in one another. It's always been about relationships. And that's why we chose our message theme that we've been doing for this series, Ripple Effect, because we all know that you have to start somewhere, right? right? You, have to, you have to jump in. And, and, and when you make that intentional decision to, 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 to jump into those moments, the energy and the power that that decision creates, it expands and has impact in ways that are beyond our imaginations. I mean, just think about the community of Jesus' followers and how small they started, right? They started small, yet 2,000 years later, that community has expanded across the globe. Their influence has transcended time, culture, status. It's brought us all to this place today. The life and ministry of Jesus can be understood as a ripple effect and he basically says so himself when just before he ascends into heaven, he has one last command to those who would be the trailblazers of what we often call the way. He doesn't offer them a suggestion. He doesn't say, hey, guys, you know what? If you ever get to, around to thinking about it, you might want to just consider, I don't know, doing this. He doesn't add it as some idea in a brainstorming session with his friends. He doesn't propose it as this new program to, to just try and experiment for a little while. No, actually, it is a command. It's firm. It's clear. And it's timeless. And it can be found in the book of Acts, chapter 1, verses 6 through 8. As a result, those who had gathered together asked Jesus, Lord, are you going to restore the kingdom to Israel now? Jesus replied, it isn't for you to know the times or seasons that the Father has set by his own authority. Rather, you will receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you, and you will be my witnesses. Now, check out the ripple effect here. In Jerusalem, in all Judea and Samaria, and to the end of the earth. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Amen. In this very simple response, I think that Jesus was actually sharing with his disciples that they were to continue his mission in the world. And his mission was and is and always has been people. It's community. Over the years, I've shared this before, but there is something that's called the basic law of congregational life. And that is, means that is essentially it says that churches are healthiest when we intentionally reach out to others instead of focusing on our own needs first. And God's mission for the church is to continually increase in its ability to give itself away. 
When we enter into life-giving mission of God, God then sends us to Jerusalem, to Judea, and Samaria, and to the end of the earth. And each of those places has significance for us. So I want to just take a moment and and look at each one. Jesus starts by saying it starts in Jerusalem. And Jerusalem actually represents the local congregation. Jerusalem was where the temple stood for the Jewish culture. And for us, it represents the congregation that we know as Broomfield UMC. Now, I think we all know for those of us that have been in church a long time, it can be easy to stay in just the church, to build our own kingdom through programs and budgets and strategic plans. I recognize the irony of what today is. It's not lost on me. Don't get me wrong, though. Jerusalem is important. I mean, that's, Jesus recognizes it. But he just doesn't see it as the destination. As the, he sees it as the starting place. Jesus understands that the best way to nurture ourselves is to join together in reaching out to nurture someone else. And that the more we do that, actually the healthier we become. Now throughout this message series, you've been hearing stories. We've heard some already this morning. You're going to hear some a little bit later on as well of how this church takes care of each other. How we love and support one another. How faith is born here, it's nurtured here, and then it's sent out from here. And it reminds me of a story that Kirsten and Matt Madrid shared with me and another group that was meeting together about an Eagle Scout project of their son that had been completed about four years ago. And their son, Alden Madrid, one of our students, he wanted to do a landscaping project here at the church. And so after meeting with our facilities manager, Bob Ramirez, and then our longtime partner of the church, Marv Eeks, God rest his soul, they decided to plant 10 trees on the property. So Alden went on over to the tree farm. You know the tree farm, the one where you go down I-25 and take exit 235. (laughs) And then you go, sing it with me, five miles west to the tree farm. See it. (laughs) Yeah. That's the one. That's one of those, you know you're from Colorado if, right? And my apologies to Krista and Taylor. That might be the song that's stuck in all of our heads as we leave here today. I mean, <laughs> so I, I mean, it just has its tentacles. It just gets into your brain, I tell you. So, well, back to your previously message here. But, so he went down to the tree farm. And he spoke to one of the arborists there, and they educated him on the trees. They educated him on how to take care of them, also how to properly plant them. And because of a generous donation by Marv Eeks to purchase the trees, Alden was able to buy them and then transport them here to the church. And you don't realize it, but every time you come to the church, doesn't matter what direction you come from, you see one of these trees. There are two maple trees that are planted on the east side of the church along the sidewalk over there. There are three honey locust trees that are planted on the northwest side of the church, just kind of right over here, kind of on the property line between us and Reach Church, just right across the street. There are two trees that are planted by the, by the main office doors right over here. If you go straight down the sidewalk, kind of northwest or southwest, they're going to be on your left-hand side. Then there's a tree by the corner on the stop sign. There's another tree not too far away from that. And then there's the blue spruce that's planted on the island. You see one of these trees every time you come here. And for two years, Alden cared for those trees, watering them every other day in the summer months, and then wrapping the tree trunks so that they would be prepared and ready for the winter months. And because of Marv's generous donation and because of Alden's care and nurturing of the trees, all 10 of those trees are thriving today. It reminds me of Proverbs 11.25 where it says, Generous persons will prosper. Those who refresh others will themselves be refreshed. When we generously nurture life, we in return receive life. Our impact begins here in Jerusalem, but it doesn't stay here. 
It ripples out, Jesus says, to Judea. And Judea represents actually the geographical area that, that kind of surrounded the temple. It, it's important to feel a responsibility for an area that is larger than our own church. And the larger the area, the, the healthier a church will become. For us, it's Broomfield, it's Westminster, and Erie, and Lafayette, and, and Louisville, and Arvada, and Superior, and Thornton, and Decono, and Denver. These are all places where, where everybody is coming from. We could go on and on. But when we take our faith beyond the walls of the church, lives change. And that's what I love deeply about our church. Because at the core, at the very fundamental level, we all get that. You get that. From the food and backpack drives to serve weekend to the community time mission moments to safe parking spaces and English as a second language and AA groups and all of those things that, that utilize our space. We strive to live our lives by giving ourselves away. And it's not just in the charitable things that we do. But it's also in our growing involvement with groups and organizations outside of the church that are trying to make a difference in the lives of our neighbors and our community. For example, in the last about six weeks or so, we've gathered with other clergy and laity from other churches right here in the Broomfield area to pray about and to discern how the faith community of Broomfield can come alongside community organizations to not just talk about, but actually start to solve issues like affordable housing, mental health, and we could go on and on. How can the church be a voice for justice, a voice of encouragement, support, and wisdom to tackle the difficult issues together? Judea feels the impact of what we do together. But Jesus says that it can't just stay in Jerusalem and Judea, but it also needs to have this ripple out effect into Samaria too. Now, if you don't know much about Samaria, Samaria represents the unloved and the unwanted people of our society. You see, G Jews and Samaritans, for those of you who know, they really didn't like each other that much. You know, they weren't friends on Facebook. They didn't golf together every Thursday. They, they, they certainly weren't in a fantasy football league together. But the Samaritans worshipped differently. They had their own priests. They had their own traditions. Samaritans considered themselves the only true believers. And Jews and Samaritans alike both saw each other as heretics of the faith. It was bad blood. It was divisive. And I think we understand division today, don't we? Yet Jesus said... That if you want to be a follower of him, then you've got to go to those places and to those people as well. A few weeks ago, I shared with you a story of the unexpected death of a 30-year-old man in our community by the name of Jonathan. And his family contacted us to celebrate his life. And if you remember... They realized how many connections when they got here to the church, they realized how many connections the young man had to our church from Cub Scout Pinewood Derby races to Jesus Pizza in high school, all of those things. And he and his family, from what I understand, never worshipped here. I, I don't think Jonathan was baptized here or confirmed here. But on some level, he knew this was a safe place. On some level, he felt loved here. I kind of want to give you this Paul Harvey moment and offer you the rest of the story. You see, because at the end of the reception after his celebration of life service, his mom, who is a local and very incredible and gifted artist, came to me and told me that she was going to gift our church with one of her paintings because she was so grateful for the love that she and her family felt, but also to celebrate our inclusivity as a church because that was something that was very important for her. So a few days later, she dropped off this painting. And there's a picture of it up on the screen because I know not everybody can see it. But she said that it was painted with a feeling of love and acceptance for my children, she said. 
just pure love and warmth and color that I want them to feel and that I want for their world, to embrace and celebrate, to see beauty in each other. We're going to be hanging this painting in a prominent place in the church. We still haven't figured out exactly where that is because we want it to be a place that whenever we go by it, whenever we see it, that we're reminded that God calls us to see the beauty in each other and in the world around us. That God invites us into the lives of our present-day Samaritans. You know, the ones who get the bulk of our disdain, our anger, and our callousness. Who is the Samaritan in your life that Jesus is calling you to? Because see, friends, as a church, we are committed to go beyond just going to Samaria. You know, kind of just passing through, making ourselves feel a little bit better about ourselves because we did something nice for those people. But we're actually committed to taking up residence there. Building meaningful relationships that color the world with the love of Jesus. We are having and can continue to have an impact in Samaria. But Jesus then takes it even one step further. And he says that you should not just be in Samaria, but it should also ripple out to the end of the earth. And the end of the earth, it represents, yes, the world. And we remember as John Wesley, who is the father of Methodism, when he said, the world is my parish. But maybe even more importantly, I believe, that the end of the earth, it represents the reality that God's love never ends. That the more we reach beyond ourselves, the healthier we become. And the more faithfully we are able to live into the heart, the mission of God. In other words, when we live lives that generously pour more love out into the world, it can't help but to stretch beyond what we can even imagine. God's love ripples on and on and on and on with no end in sight. I want you to hear a few more stories of how that love continues to ripple through our community and through what we do together as Broomfield UMC. Today I want to tell you about my high school principal, Armin Johansson. I went to Fort Collins High, and he came in the early 70s to institute variable scheduling and all of us who were students at Fort Collins High in the late 1970s would say he was the best leader that any of us had ever seen to that point in our lives. Let me tell you how he's described. He was the kind of person who knew his students well, knew the parents by name, and knew his staff and all their interests and hobbies. Peterson who was a colleague of his, said that Johansson was somebody who connected people as individuals, and because he valued human interaction, many people respected him. Every day, he would stand in the halls and greet us all by name. And he was fair when he had to uh, discipline students. He was always kind and gentle, and he knew how to, if somebody had a good idea, he knew how to jump on that and uh, encourage it. Now, I tell you all of this because uh, Armin Johansson started his career in Littleton. And you'll never guess who his mentor was. His mentor was an administrator named Marv Eakes. And the qualities that you've just heard about Armin Johansson sure sound a lot like Marv Eakes, don't they? There is a ripple effect for you. So I followed Jesus because uh, it allowed me to see the beauty in the world and instead of the ugly. Um, my name is Sarah Adcock. So I'm from San Antonio. I grew up in the church. Um, and as a child, I tried to live this perfect life and like live up to everyone's standards. Um, as a young adult, I came out as gay and I didn't really know where I fit in a church anymore. I think I felt shame. Um, when I met Emily, she shared her faith with me and Emily grew up United Methodist. 
and I grew up non-denominational Christian. Um, and I expressed to Emily when I first met her that I think that what I was really missing in my life was the church community because I had kind of strayed away from the church, not really knowing where I fit anymore. Um, having gotten to know Emily and her family, um, she kind of shared this idea with me of if grace is true, um, is actually a book. And I realized that there's nothing that I can do to get me into heaven and there's nothing that I can't do to keep me from heaven and that God loves me with just where I am and I just as I am. Um, and so I'm thankful for this community because, you know, Emily and I come to this church and we're just loved just as we are. Um, and we don't have to do anything or be anyone special. We just feel this overwhelming um, expression of love from this community. If you ever wonder if we're making a difference, just remember all of the stories we've been hearing over the last four weeks. And on this Blessing Sunday, we have an opportunity to ensure that the love we experience here is shared generously beyond these walls because we believe that the more love we pour into others, the more loving our world will become. And one of the ways that we pour love is through the ministries of the church. And they are ministries that are made possible through, yes, your financial support. That's just one way. It's also through the ways in which you live and love outside of this space. It's through the ways in which you use your gifts and your talents, who God created you to be. I want to encourage you that if you consider Broomfield UMC, your faith community, I want to invite you to consider how your giving in 2024 will continue the ripple effect of faith and love beyond what we can imagine in this moment. If you didn't bring your Make an Impact card, we do have some in the pew pockets that are right in front of you. And so as we sing our final song, if you brought that with you or if you want to fill one out today, you can bring those forward to any of the baskets and just place it there. If you don't want to bring it forward, you don't have to. You can place it in the offering baskets a little bit later as you leave worship today. If you are a guest with us, please do not feel like you need to, to be a part of that. Just know that this is who we are as Broomfield UMC. This is who we are striving to become. If maybe you gave online, you can just write on the card. If you want to bring something forward, I gave online. And then you can bring that card forward. But our giving goal this year is $1,053,520. That is a portion of the $2.2 million budget that we have for 2024. And I have to tell you, friends, that is a stretch for us. But we believe in what God is doing through us and with God and with the generosity that defines us. I believe it's possible. Because remember, when we give ourselves away, we invest in relationships that create vibrant and healthy communities. We invest in creating places for those who have been battered by the, sh by the storms, who are isolated, who are walking on the rocky shorelines of life, and they are crying out for connection be able to rediscover their value and their worth in the midst of loving community and the kind of loving community that we are striving to create here. What we do together here, friends, it has a ripple effect. It's making a difference and it will live on and on and on. Amen. I invite you to rise in body or in spirit. Come forward as you are led. And sing with us now. This is the sound of one voice. One spirit, one voice. The sound of one makes a choice. This is
Yes, we can praise God for that. A loving and gracious and holy God. May the sound of the one voice of love that has been growing and stirring in us be shared with everyone we come in contact with this week. God, I want to thank you for this community, for the ways in which they love each other. The ways in which they strive to break down walls that keep us from one another. But more than anything else, God, for the ways in which they love you. And the inspiration that they are for me, for our staff, for our community the gift that they are to each other, to Broomfield, to our surrounding areas, to Samaria, to the end of the earth. Continue, God, to do your work in us. We are here. We are your instruments. We are your people. Lead us and guide us in your way, O God. We ask all this in the name of your Son, who is our Lord and our Savior, Jesus the Christ, and all of God's people said, You are invited to a wonderful brunch right over here in the Family Life Center, just right around the corner. It is a free brunch. Our staff has been working on it all morning. Maybe you start to smell some of the bacon and sausage as you leave here. Let it draw you over there. But as we go over there, I want to leave you with this benediction, and it's by Daniel Bayless. He says, sometimes I wonder, what's the point Why be good? Why care? Why try to change things? Why, when we continue to wreck each other, yet I keep moving forward? Not because I am confident of any outcomes, but because I am still susceptible to sweet things. A sunset, a cup of coffee, 
a warm blanket, the smell of lilacs, the sound of my mother's laughter, and all the other forms of love. Sometimes I wonder, what would the world look like if each of us decided to become a form of love? I hope you make that decision as you go out into the world this week. Be whatever form of love that God has created you to be in the world. Go in his grace, in his joy, and in his peace. Amen.